we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media. A list of reasons why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media. And we're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Yes. All right. So I've seen many headlines on all the events that are to unfold during the hottest months of the year. Mm-hmm. Well, starting in May, so maybe not the hottest, but warmer. Still pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. The pleasantries are here. Yeah. Get to the riverside, picnic, um, <laughs> listen to concerts, fall asleep things like that. When in doubt as to what to do uh, on your day off, just head over to the river. Actually, that's not a bad plan at Mm. all, right? I mean, just be prepared to see a lot of people. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> lots of tents. Uh, lots we're, of tents we're not lots supposed to put up tents, though, are we? Uh, isn't isn't that murky waters? Like, depends which yeah. which river side. I, I still see plenty in. of tents. I see tents around. everywhere. Yeah. So maybe that's moot. Mm. Or did they go back on their their gentle nudge I'll for us to, check to up on tent that. up? Yeah. Okay, but nonetheless, <laughs> tent or not, there's a lot of events taking place because clearly Han River is a popular attraction mm-hmm. for locals and visitors alike. I think the funniest one I came across was just mattresses. And and concert and the idea is for yeah. you to just fall asleep <laughs> at the concert. Yeah. It's kind of misleading, isn't it? Yeah. It <laughs> sort of defeats the purpose of a concert. <laughs> but I digress. Okay. So the idea is to attract apparently upwards of 3 million visitors by year end. Yep. That's all due to Han River events. That's right. So more than 120 uh, programs, festive events are going to take place by the river uh, along the Riverside Parks um, starting tomorrow. Okay. Because tomorrow... It's this May. It's May 1st. Yes, that's right. And it's going to take place. Th- these festivals are going to take place um, throughout the year until the end of the year. And uh, like Lena said, the aim is to attract around 3 million visitors. Um, so the 2024 Han River Festival has a theme. Uh, it's Joy Beyond Imagination. Huh. And uh, it's going to spend across 11 riverside parks across the city. I don't know. So maybe falling asleep is encouraged. Joy Beyond Beyond my imagination, <laughs> my sub- tapping into yeah. my subconscious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I mean, any visitor who comes to Korea is amazed by the magnitude of Han River. Yeah. It's huge. That's and right. Rivers going through major cities. I mean, that's just history. Mm. But ours is humongous. So yeah. It makes sense that we would invest a little bit more to have 120 festivals. That's programs. right. <laughs> All right. So under this slogan, joy beyond imagination, what can we expect? Um, so uh, just to mention a few, the top 10. Ten most uh, popular programs include a mask parade. No. Uh, the 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 whole point of this is: do you have to create your own mask? Uh, you have to uh, walk down or march down the Chamsu Bridge, the submersible uh, okay. bridge, wearing this self-made mask. And there's going to be a naval band and these large-sized dolls walking beside you. Okay, so we've had a particular face mask for the last yeah. couple of years. It's not that. It's no, these the- are decorative masks. That cover your eyes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I was like, the other one's not very interesting. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, so decorative masks, and uh, there is also the annual Mongderigi competition. It's back um, to select who is the best at basically spacing out for a whopping ninety minutes. Was it Crush who crushed this? Uh, was it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I forget. I feel, I feel like it was one celebrity this has been... who got a lot oh, yeah, of spotlight. That's right. I, I do remember now. Yeah. 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 That's not my imagination. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, so for uh, basically an hour and a half, you have to just sit and space out, which is torture for me. Yeah, yeah. Ninety minutes of just spacing out now in public, surrounded by other people. That would make me feel very, very uncomfortable. I'm imagining it now, and I'm right there with yeah. you. Ninety minutes is a really long, time. long time. I can accomplish <laughs> like seventy five percent of my show. Yeah, as long as you have your coffee, though. Yeah. <laughs> It's a different story. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Now, the list also includes a sleeping contest that's uh, slated to take place on May 11th, which is going to award the person who sleeps the most peacefully for two full You're hours. Kidding. Yeah, this is the, my, my first time hearing about this particular event. Anyway, sleeping contest, uh, a songwriting contest. This is for university students mm. and it's going to be held a little bit later uh, in the month on May 25th. There's also a boat parade on June 2nd, um, a pep rally for the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris. 
um, from July uh, 26th through August 11th. Uh, there's also going to be a noise-free DJ party again this year. So basically participants, they're, they're dancing wearing wireless <laughs> headphones. So, you know, people just walking by can't hear any music, but these people are just dancing like crazy, right? The thing is, past events, I thought people would really go all out. Yeah. But it's, it's a little bit like, you know, safe, like a little bit moving. Uh, people are shy. Like move to right, move to left. I'm like, no, no. you're supposed to go all out. Oh, that's no so fun. <laughs> but I, just the idea of this, right? Right. Always free DJ party. But I'm assuming they're all listening to the same set list. Yeah, okay. I think so. Um, there's also going to be a car free festival at the Chamsu Bridge. Um, yeah, so, you know, the city estimates this will bring in uh, $87.2 million in economic benefits alongside uh, 964 new jobs. So it's a win win for everybody. Yeah. I mean, the weather is definitely getting nicer. I definitely seeing more and more people out and about on the weekends in all the, the, the popular neighborhoods around Seoul. For me, I think that's just one of the fun takeaways. I see people dressed so confused. Yeah. I saw yesterday people in shorts, someone in a sweater. Yeah, same here. I saw a leather tank jackets, top. tank tops. Yep. And I thought, yeah. Toot. I even saw somebody wearing a tube top. Is that right? Yeah. Isn't that like reserved for like July, August? Yeah, I thought what so. What but... will you wear during <laughs> the humid months? <laughs> Have you ever wondered how they come up with these uh, numbers? 964 new jobs. That's so specific. That's very specific. But I mean, this is all pushed by Soul City. So maybe <laughs> yep. that's where they get the numbers. Mm. Okay. So lots of events around Han River. Be on the lookout for it. Let's move on to our second buzzword this morning. Uh, Kansong Art Museum returns uh, Go uh, its regular exhibition yeah. scheduled. A uh, first in a decade. They yeah. were going through a, a ton of financial troubles. That's they? right. That's right. So um, the Kansung Art Museum, which is Korea's oldest private museum is opening uh, next month, which is tomorrow. Mm. Um, it's returning to its regular mm. exhibition schedule after 10 years and it's going to unveil a recently recovered archive that gives us insight into how the museum was built 86 years ago by its founder uh, Chen Hyongpil. Mm. Now the exhibition, Pohagak 1938 is opening tomorrow and it's going to feature a set of blueprints of the museum oh. that was uh, drawn by architect Park Kyung, and the blueprints were discovered last year as the museum was undergoing restorations. Discovered, you said? Discovered. Not safely kept away all these years? Well, I don't know. They, they, okay. that, that's how a lot of the, the news articles uh, express, portray it. Yeah, portray it. Okay. Yeah. okay, so how are the blueprints found? Do we have some leads? Yeah, so they were apparently found folded in an envelope oh. and it took experts months to restore the images they found in this envelope and uh, they said you know the 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 public would be unable to imagine just how compact the storage uh. was it was so small that the experts when they discovered what they found they couldn't grasp what they might find at the time inside the envelopes. Like, what is this? I'll just leave it up to your yep. imagination. So that's how it <laughs> yes. went missing all these yep. years. But what a happy discovery. Mm. And now I'm assuming they have the technology to restore that's it right. and show it to the public. Now, when was the museum founded? And what is the significance of the museum in present day? Yeah, so the museum is kind of regarded as a, a fortress of Korean artifacts. It was founded in 1938 by uh, the wealthy merchant, Chen Young pil uh, whose pen name was Kansong, hence the name Kansong Art Museum. Yes, uh, he at the time collected Korean cultural artifacts. This mm. was during Japan's colonial rule, uh, and his goal was to protect Korean heritage mm. from being taken out of the country. Mm. And uh, he actually built the museum during the colonial period. Isn't that kind of a common thread? You go through history books in different parts of Europe, North America, uh -huh. different parts of Asia, and it's usually a wealthy some. That's Somebody right. or a wealthy family who wants um, to preserve, yeah, yeah, and they have the resources to collect right. and safeguard, yep. and that he did. Kan Sung or Chen Young Pil. Mm. The museum has technically been closed for the past ten years. Let's review why that happened. Is it technically <laughs> closed for the past ten years yeah. um, because it became difficult over the years to accommodate visitors in this aging facility. Mm. Uh, it had some financial problems as well. Mm. It, it led to it led the museum to run exhibitions temporarily mm. at the 
the Tungdemun Design Plaza from 2014 to 2019. Uh, the museum separately built a new storage facility in 2022, um, and uh, it started renovating the existing museum building mm. called Pohagak uh, that had been used as both an exhibition space and storage space. Okay. Uh, so Pohagak was open temporarily to the public last year before uh, the renovations started. Now, the museum regards the blueprints of the museum as the oldest extant modern architecture blueprints in Korea. Is that right? Yeah, they're so very valuable. Okay. Uh, The set of blueprints found also includes those of uh, Chon Yong-pil, the founder's house, Mm. uh, which was located right behind the museum. Mm. And the house was demolished after it was damaged uh, in a fire during the Korean War. Mm. Uh, Now, the museum is currently planning to push for registering these uh, extremely valuable blueprints blueprints as state-designated artifacts. Okay, so keeping tabs on that yes. story, the exhibition opens to public tomorrow. Mm. Uh, how long do we actually have to actually see yeah. the Kansu Art Museum? So the upcoming exhibition is going to run through uh, June 16th. Mm-hmm. It includes the founder's hand-drawn images of wooden cabinets that he saw while visiting uh, Osaka Museum in Japan all those years ago. The exhibition is free, by the way. Mm. Uh, and uh, the current Kansu Art Museum is located in Songbuku in Seoul, mm. but it's going to open a regional branch in Tegu in September. So that's new news. Okay, yeah. so uh, I guess financial troubles all figured out. I guess to a certain they're, extent. Yeah, to a certain extent. Okay, pay attention because it, it takes a village to keep these art museums up and alive. Yeah. And we're streaming some of the images. It's, it's so difficult to, yeah. to, you know, keep these museums sustainable. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because, I mean, it just uh, even us, when we say something is free, we're yep. like, we get excited. That's right. But, um, <laughs> but everything has a cost. Yep. Okay, how about we leave it there for now? Mm. Do check it out, the Kansu Art Museum. Mm. Uh, apparently an American airline, actually I'm not surprised <laughs> at all, but keeps mistaking a 101-year-old woman for a baby. For a baby, a one-year-old I, child. You're kidding. <laughs> so um, the, the problem it keeps repeating itself because American Airlines systems apparently cannot compute <laughs> that uh, the woman Patricia was born in 1922 and not 2022. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the woman says that she would like the glitch to be fixed because it has caused her problems in the past and she apparently travels quite regularly. Okay. Uh, for example, on one occasion, airport staff did not have a transport ready for her inside the terminal because they were expecting a baby who could be carried. Otherwise, they would have prepared a wheelchair or some sort of uh, vehicle to carry her luggage. Okay, you know? okay. Um, most recently, she was flying with her daughter, who made the reservation online for the ticket. And the computer at the airport thought her mother's birth date was 2022 and not 1922. And the same thing happened last year. They were also expecting a one-year-old baby. And lo and behold, uh, she turns up and they're like, okay. <laughs> Even American Airlines, which doesn't yeah. really have a good reputation, those local airliners, mm. um, I the idea is when you go to book a ticket, you book an adult ticket yeah. or a ticket for an infant, and the price discrepancy is pretty huge. That's so right. Shouldn't they have other means of double checking that? Yeah, you know, her seat was booked as an adult ticket, okay. but uh, it appears the airport computer system is unable to process a birth date so far in the past. So it defaulted to 100 years later instead. I think this is a problem that's going to be fixed very soon because more and more people are going to be to live, live longer and healthier, longer lives. and healthier lives. That's right. Right. Yeah. Uh, am I the only one that's floored by this 101 year old woman who's still traveling regularly? Yeah, regularly. Come to on, see that's her, really cool. You know, grandchildren, yeah. her kids. She moves, you know, between seasons. So, you know, she, she basically follows the sun where it's warmer. That, <laughs> that's very nice. Yes. Yeah. What a plan. Love it. Thank you so much, Erica. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.